Well, hello everyone. Um, today we're going to look at an oven um, that uh, has drop damage and it was working until it was dropped. So we're going to have a look at it and see if we can fix it. So grab yourself a cup of coffee, sit down, and let's enjoy this video. All right, you can see it's dead. The LCD panel has absolutely no power to it. Um, turning it on, uh, trying to operate it, there's absolutely, it's a totally dead unit. There's absolutely no power to it. So let's unplug it and we'll have a look. Now you can see right here, if you look real close, you can see the cabinet does have drop damage. So it was dropped pretty heavily. Um, you can see that the cabinets just held on with regular Phillips screwdrivers. That's all it is. So let's see if we can go ahead and get it taken apart and see what we can find. Interestingly enough, guys, on this unit, you do have to remove the little feet. It has little feet like this four of them you do have to remove those as well in order to get the cabinet to come off so now that we've done that let's see if we can remove the cabinet there we go yeah it ain't gonna take much to try to straighten that up we'll use this on it and give it a few See if we can get it to straighten up some. Not bad. Not bad. It looks a little bit better. All right. Let's have a look at this. Let's see if we can figure out what's going on here. Here's the power unit. There's the control board there. Just basically, you're trying to look and just make sure that all the wiring is still connected. Fall damage could be knocking a wire loose. And it looks like everything is pretty much still intact. So, literally the next step's going to be, we're gonna have to remove this uh, circuit board here and get it removed and see, let's see, have a look here. I don't see anything that's troublesome, really. Yeah, it looks like everything is still well connected. There is a fuse right there. Yeah. Usually fuses won't pop because of drop damage. But, you know, it's possible it could have blew. So that was probably be the first thing that I would check, honestly. And see if there's any getting any power there or not. So just a little update on this. Um, we did find out that a microwave plugged in the same outlet as this was um, quit working as well. And I'm um, pretty sure it's the fuse that blown. So here's the main power board right here. You can see it right here. So we're going to remove that and double check that it is the fuse. <clears throat> um, but we did find out that the um, the uh, electrical outlet was a little wonky and so we had to fix that um, actually it was a homeowner that fixed it so um, so we know that that's what caused the issues with this it had nothing to do with being dropped um, it had nothing to do with any uh, normally if if it's 
the power supply is a blown fuse, why you want to replace it, of course, but you also want to troubleshoot further to see why the fuse blown. Well, in the case of these two appliances, we also have the microwave um, from the same household. So um, we do, since we do know that it was the power uh, outlet that caused the issue, um, all we need to do is just replace the fuses. Now they are um, in circuit fuses that are permanent. Um, they are removed with a soldering iron. So that's what we're gonna have to do to get them off and replace them. And then once we do that, the board should be good to go. So let's get started and get this board removed and then we'll verify that it is indeed a blown fuse like we thought. Need a little stub stub or my little bendy. I wonder if my bendy's over here. I think I got a bendy tool. Okay, anyways, we're gonna get that board removed and we'll be right back. Okay, so here we got the trusty old fluke out and uh, got it on continuity. All right, let's see if we can get this thing to work. It's not wanting to make a noise, is it? All right. Well, the meter ain't even working, so that's lovely. I wish I knew what was going on with my continuity on this. Let's take a look at that real quick while we're waiting. Continuity on that meter. This should not be like that, guys. So I'm kind of curious. Let's see why it's not working, because it was working before. Let's get this off. Got this meter and this one. Okay, these leads. A little jiggle and a little adjustment. All right. Oh, really? I got to fix that again. Okay, well, there's an easy way to fix that too. Pad's not helping any. So it looks like the pad is wore out right here, huh? So what we're gonna do is let's add 
let's add just a bit of cardboard, just a little piece of cardboard, just like that. Mm -hmm. That ought to work. We're just going to buy a new unit, guys. That way we don't have to worry about it. All right, let's see here. It's working like a champ. All right, now let's try this fuse. We can still see it's still blown. All right, all right, let's uh, let's go ahead and put fresh solder on this. So you want to use rosin. You want to use the Rosencore uh, solder. You want to establish a heat gate on your iron. You do this by melting solder like that. Then you simply just add it. Make sure you have flux on it so that it flows evenly. Just going to heat it up, put fresh solder on it. And what this is going to do is allow us to clean it real good. There's one leg. Let's get the other leg. Okay. Now that we got fresh solder on it. Okay. Let's go ahead and get this little guy going. He should be hot. He is hot. All right. And this is a desoldering gun, guys, basically. And it just falls right out. See that? comes in handy now they have others that just continuously you can hear them continuously suck or whatever and those are okay too but um, I really like this these guys all right let's get him out of the way for the moment and now that we've got this removed you see it leaves a nice nice clean empty hole there so for later on um, we're gonna go ahead and clean it off right now though this is just regular alcohol guys all right so we'll set this aside we'll have to order that new fuse um, let's see what it is. We need 250 volt and we're going to need, it looks like, it'll say on the fuse itself. Okay. It looks like it's 500 milliamp, 250 volts. That's the fuse that we need. Yeah, you can tell it's blown by looking at the bottom of it. I don't know if you can see that that well. But, um, so we'll get that ordered. Uh, See, this is why you should never do multiple projects at once, guys. We laid this syringe, the really stupid thing to do. Don't, don't do what I do, just do as I say, right? But no, seriously, we laid this syringe, it's full of flux, on the hot plate. It was just going to leave it a few seconds, got sidetracked working on the meter, and guess what? It, it just totally melted it, guys. This is definitely what I would call a fail. I do have other syringes, though, that I can put the flux, uh, put flux into, so... Um, here's my flux paste. It comes in a little metal thing like this, and you just basically just put the syringe in it, fill up the syringe, but, you know, it got a little, um, hardened up too because of the, uh, temperatures, the cold temperatures. So, just stick this on the hot plate, um, for a good 10 seconds, you know, 5 to 10 seconds and just enough to moisten it up get it loose and it'll work depends on how hard it is that's pretty hard because it's i mean like we had 20 degrees weather uh we had 20 degrees weather out here last night so that doesn't help any when you're working in a lab right all right guys so now we're gonna um get that ordered and uh we'll show you um we'll put that in and solder it in and then uh, we'll show you the unit working after. So here's the old fuse and here's the new fuse. You're going to notice that there is a slight difference in them as far as size. 
Okay, so you can see one is just a little bit bigger, but as long as you got room on the board, because see here's where it, where it goes, as long as you got room on the board for it, um, as long as they're in the same spec, then uh, you're good to go on the, on the fuse. Some manufacturers of fuses, these are two different brands is what it is, and some manufacturers make the cases a little bigger, and that's the case here. Um, you can see we should get a, a beep if this was good. So we'll test it, we'll test it one more time. Okay. And you can see there isn't. There's no beep on that. So let's try this one. This is the new one. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and put this in and the new one in and uh, go ahead and get uh, this thing up and going again. Hopefully that's all that it is. Uh, we'll find out here in just a minute. And then we'll <clears throat> try and plug them up and see what we got here. So we'll get this, the legs bent, how we need it on this. Right here's where the fuse goes, guys, and because it is a fuse, it doesn't matter which, it's not, uh, doesn't matter which direction, just as long as it goes in there. Okay. There we go. Now we got to solder on the leads to help we have a handy dandy little tool here. You can get these on Amazon. They're literally circuit board holders. They are adjustable, so you can adjust them out or in. This side comes on a spring, you can see. See there, the spring. And uh, it's going to hold the board for us, guys. And it has grooves cut. Let's see if we can get you in the camera. It has grooves cut in it so that uh, you can see it holds the board real easy. I've already sized this one up, so it should just slide on in there. Just solder it in, and then uh, we'll be good to go, hopefully. Put a little flux on it. Let's get us a little heat gate on here. Alrighty, let's just solder her right in there. Always, guys, I should do like a 101, a 101 about soldering. I'll probably do that. But you always want to put a little solder on the tip when you store it, so that way uh, it does the tip don't oxidize. Because um, literally, if it oxidizes, it it'll put pits in it, and then yeah, get it cleaned up. You want to trim the excess leads off and then there you go. So this board should be ready to go, guys. Okay, now um, it's very important that you get these wires connected correctly. So uh, you want to make sure that you paid attention to what they, where they go when you removed it. If you don't remember how it went, you can literally, if you look at the board, um, the board is marked and it will tell you where things go. You can see this, this one says bottom, which is uh, the bottom heating element. This is the top heating element. This is the fan for cooling. And then this is your main, uh, right here, these two are your main uh, power in. So, and also another thing to remember that on these circuits, the incoming power is gonna be the closest to the fuse. So that, if that helps, 
as well. And due to where this is setting, it is easier to go ahead and connect these wires before you mount it. It'd be a lot easier. Um, so you got, um, you've got white and red on top here and make sure that because there's multiple reds make sure it's, this one is the one you just can follow it and you'll see that it goes right to the incoming power source right here you got so and it's going to be red on this side white right here okay put that cover back on it Okay, then you've got blue, red, and black. Blue goes here, blue goes to the fan. And then red and then black. Alrighty, now we'll go ahead and mount it in place. So it's just a matter of replacing the screws back where they go. And uh, I know y'all don't want to watch me screw, so we'll be right back. Okay guys, so we got the cabinet put back on like it's supposed to be. So let's flip it upside down. And we're gonna have to get the feet put on, so. Okay, you can see that we got the cabinet on. We've got our four little feet. There's little feet that goes on it. We've got that installed. So let's turn the oven right side up. Make sure everything's secure in it. And let's plug it up and make sure it works, guys. All right, let's get it. Ready? Well, we got life in it, don't we? So, okay, let's see here. Let's set, oh wow. Okay, so that's the time. This is a timer, how long it stays on. This is your temperature. Start it. And there we go. Oh, it's starting to warm up, guys. Yeah, it's starting to warm up, you know? And uh, see how well it does. Yeah, it's starting to get hot. Yep, yeah, it's hot. So it does heat up pretty good in such a short amount of time. There you go, guys. So uh, we got our cup of coffee here. Oven's turned on. Might as well pop a pizza or something in it, right? And uh, I'm not really a fan of working on appliances, but um, hopefully this helped you. Um, you know, we already knew what caused the problem. Um, so we already knew that the fuse was most likely the culprit and it was, but we know why the fuse blown in this case, it was because of uh, the uh, outlet wasn't wired correctly. So when an outlet isn't wired tight or the wire is not put in tightly enough, um, it literally will cause crazy currents to flow through. And it overpowered the oven, blew the fuse, and that was that. Now, if a fuse is blown in a device, whether it's a TV, a phone, a tablet, whatever, um, and it looks like our imaginary pizza is done, um, you want to trace through the circuit and find out why the fuse blown. If everything checks out good, then it's most likely a, a search or a power surge, which was the case here, that caused it. But Normally, you would want to trace through the circuit and check everything, especially on the power side, and make sure that you don't have a component that's shorted um, or something like that that would cause a fuse to blow. Um, since we already knew the case on this, we really didn't have to do any further troubleshooting other than the actual repair. So, hopefully, when you diagnose or when you're troubleshooting an oven like this, you don't automatically just assume that it's a fuse only and replace that.
because it, although it might power up like this did, there may be an off and on short because of a component failing that would cause the fuse to blow. And you may uh, experience it again in the future. So that's what you want to keep in mind when you're working on any unit, not just something like this. So anyways, I'm rambling, so I'm gonna let you guys go. Um, grab your, I'm gonna uh, enjoy my coffee. And just remember, every successful repair requires a cup of coffee.